everybody, it's the Cooking Mom, Amy Hanton. It is Wednesday, I'm at home, live right now in my kitchen with Arlo, and this is his new toy, which he's super excited about. I told you about it yesterday. I posted a video of Arlo yesterday. We gave him a new dog toy, because his old toy was really ratty and just kind of not so great. And so when I was ordering his dog food to be delivered, um, they, they ship it to us. I thought, ah, you know, I was feeling a little, you know, I, I, I probably, okay, total confession. I bought him the dog toy for me to see his reaction. So anyway, if you missed it, uh, you can um, find the video on Facebook and on Instagram, uh, thecookingmom.com. But anyway, he is loving Gary the Gator. So wanted to show you Gary the Gator. Arlo, where did you go with Gary the Gator? Anyway, it's just so cute to see uh, this dog with this toy. Um, anyway, I have a really fun, easy, easy recipe for you today. I know we're all watching our pennies, and I still have ham that needs using. Um, uh, one of my tips and secrets for, you know, getting through this difficult time and, and doing... Did he bring back Gary the Gator? Arlo, where's Gary the Gator? Anyway, um, seriously, is, uh, you know, to make life a little easier is to cook once and get a few different meals out of it. So I was really debating whether or not do, you know, we should do a ham for Easter, but I I'm so glad we did because on Monday I made that amazing slow cooker um, split pea and ham soup and we've been eating that for lunch and snacking on that. Um, yesterday I made that really quick one skillet recipe with uh, pasta and uh, a yummy uh, sauce and Swiss cheese and ham and broccoli. Uh, and today I've got another recipe. I've got one more recipe to use up that ham. It's a slow cooker scalloped potatoes and ham. And it is so easy, so good. Uh, and you can throw it together in no time. Makes a nice big batch. And here in Wisconsin, keeping it real, it's technically spring, but it feels like winter. I mean, it snowed here in Sheboygan yesterday. It, it's not sticking. But it's cold. I mean, it's it's chilly, and so I'm still uh, with everything that's going on, and, and because of the weather, we're still craving comfort food in my house. So, all right, let's get to the recipe, and then we'll chat a little bit more. So, this is one of my faves. I make it every time I make a big ham at the holidays, whether it be uh, Christmas or Easter, because everybody loves it, and it's another really kid-friendly recipe too. And like I said, easy on the wallet. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get some potatoes. Now I'm going to, um, uh, the recipe calls for about eight to 10 potatoes, but these guys are pretty big and you can easily cut this recipe and a lot of my recipes in half. So I'm just going to, I am kind of lazy sometimes when it comes to peeling potatoes. Uh, although the kids, you know, if the kids are old enough, that would be a great job for them. A great to get them in the kitchen and have them use their motor skills, but just give it, you don't feel like peeling. Um, just give them a good scrub. And, and dry them and, and slice them up pretty thin. Go on pretty thin. We're making scalloped potatoes here. So I just use a knife. If you have a mandolin, you know, you can do it that way, but it, it, it's real quick. And baby reds would work. Uh, I happen to love using, you know, we need to support all of our Wisconsin producers. So these happen to be just Wisconsin russets, which you can pick up anywhere. I mean, they've got them at the, all over the place. So potatoes are pretty easy to find, or at least I haven't had any issues finding them. And keeping your pantry stocked with things like potatoes and pasta and, uh, you know, the basics um, really can make life so much easier and keep you from going running to the grocery store. Um, you know, we're all trying to limit or we should be limiting the amount of times we, we leave the house and go to the grocery store. So um, I'm always trying to keep things when I see a bag or two of potatoes, potatoes and onions and those pantry staples um, that you can easily use in this recipe. So now I do love the slow cooker liners. If you don't have the slow cooker liners, you can just, um, you know, spray your slow cooker really well. Oh, this happens to be wrong size. So you get the drift. They actually come in different sides. Forget it. Um, bear with me. Take a look cute Arlo and I'm gonna grab my, my uh, cooking spray. So if you don't have the liner, we're live. Uh, make sure and spray your uh, slow cooker really, really well. Um, this is my Nesco slow cooker. I love it because it's digital. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But basically, you want to lay, layer the potatoes. Just lay those on the bottom. Have a look at deck of cards. You'll do a little bit better than that. And by the way, um, I hope you've registered for my giveaway because actually this week, 
we are giving away one of these. This is one of my favorite slow cookers, and you can register to win it on Facebook. Now, if you've already registered the last couple of weeks, you're already in the contest, so uh, you know we're, no worry to, to register again. So I just, I'm layering some potatoes, some salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna do, this is shredded cheddar cheese, some good Wisconsin shredded cheddar that I actually had the time and I shredded it or grated it by hand. Now we're gonna do some more potatoes. Oh, my ham. This is leftover Easter ham. We had the most wonderful ham this year from Meesfields, a great um, locally owned meat market in, in Sheboygan and they make they smoke their ham. They've been in, in you know business for more than or 70 years. Uh, it's a family owned and operated, and boy, the ham was so good and not too salty, but they make great brats and, and all sorts of great things. So I'm um, loving the Meesville ham. And in fact, we're still, like I said, still eating it. And now we're gonna, again, keep layering. And this doesn't have to be perfect at all. Just keep layering the potatoes, some salt and pepper, the ham. I'm kind of hurrying this along because I know you guys got things to do. Tomorrow, by the way, I'm gonna do a little tease in. So I'm using all the stuff that you may have from Easter. Uh, if you have hard boiled eggs, make sure to watch tomorrow because I'm gonna show you uh, what one of my favorite things to do with them is. So that's tomorrow. I'll meet you back in my kitchen tomorrow live at 3.30, same time. I'm trying to cook every day here in my kitchen and hopefully you're liking it. I love it when you um, let me know that you're enjoying what I do. Um, I wake up in the morning and I just get excited about checking in with you guys and, and sharing different recipes and tips. So thank you for always giving me a thumbs up or a wow or commenting. Uh, it, just, it just keeps me going and um, I'll, I'll just keep coming and back here and doing these um, if, if you enjoy it. So thank you so much. All right, so I've got the ham down there. Did I do that salt and pepper that was layer? I don't think I did. So now the sauce, and besides um, the, the potatoes and the ham and the cheese, the sauce is really what makes this, and it's super easy. So basically, I've got a combination of cream of mushroom soup and a can of cream of celery soup. Now, I know that soup aisle has been a little bit, you know, there's, People are shopping the soup aisle, I guess, is what I want to say. So if you or you know can't find cream of celery soup, which actually you probably will find that, but maybe you can't find cream of mushroom, cream of chicken, again, just like yesterday's recipe, uh, you, you know, use what you have. If you have a can of cream of celery and a cream of chicken, use that. It, basically, you want two cans of soup, unless you're cutting this recipe in half, and then you can just use one of your choice. So it's really up to you. I like mixing them, um, and some people just don't do cream of mushroom soup at all. I still love it. Uh, just use two cans of cream of celery, or a can of cream of chicken and cream of celery. You get the idea. You just want to use the soup to, to make a wonderful sauce. And then we're going to add some milk to this. Full recipe, by the way, you can get on my website. Lots of recipes for quarantine and when we're stuck in really easy, uh, delicious recipes, thecookingmom.com, and this recipe is actually right below in the description. So I'm just listing my soups together and the milk, and this has been cooking uh, for several hours, and it's just been smelling good all day, and that's one of the reasons I love my slow cooker is because I can get uh, dinner done early in the morning, and we get to smell it all day, and we're, we're all, I think, looking so forward to meals, especially dinner when the day is done. So. Uh, to be able to smell it all day and that anticipation of, you know, uh, what's what's cooking, I love that. Not that I don't love my slow cooker all the time, but when we're stuck in, it just makes life so much easier. Next time I go to the grocery store, I'm going to get some more of the slow, slow cooker liners. Okay, so now uh, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to throw some more cheddar cheese. And this is another one of those, if you don't have cheddar, Use what you got. If you have Swiss, if you have Monterey Jack, if you have even just like a Mexican blend cheese or pepper jack, uh, you, you know, it's your recipe, make it yours. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna do is basically uh, a little paprika if you have it. That's just gonna give the top some nice color. So then the lid goes on. This cooks low and slow for, uh, it, until those potatoes get tender. If you're doing it low, six to eight hours. If you wanted to crank it up to high, it'd be done in about three or four hours. 
uh, until again, you just want those potatoes to be nice and tender and the sauce and the cheese to melt and, and yumminess. What I do love about this Nesco, um, this, this is the one we're giving away, by the way, uh, is it's it's programmable it's digital so basically uh, you know if you wanted to do it uh, for uh, four hours on high um, basically you know set it and then forget it so if you get busy uh, it automatically will just take it right back to warm so it'll quit at four hours and hold it at warm beautiful thing all right and, and this is a way again the one that we're giving away this week so maybe you could win so come with me this is a, I did a half of the recipe for this one in one of these little slow cookers, which are so, so cute. Great for dips and, a, you know, if you're going to have the recipe, but it is cheesy. It is, it's got that ham in there. The potatoes get all tender. It's another great meal to get out of, you know, uh, that Easter ham. Or I have to tell you, keeping it real, this is great with the salads and breads and for real kid-friendly recipe, there's nothing in there your kids won't eat unless they don't like onion. And if they don't, just leave it out. Um, but this is, look at this, it's rib stick and comfort food. And yeah, I can hardly wait to dive into that for dinner tonight. Oh, here's my little secret, my little tip. So a lot of people didn't do big hams for Easter because we had smaller gatherings, right? Uh, those hams are on sale big time, people. So uh, even if you didn't do an Easter ham, maybe you want to pick one up this week, the next time you're going to the grocery store. Or again, if you don't want to do a big ham, a ham steak will work. Even ham from the deli will work. Uh, so, you know, um, there you go. A really great recipe for when we're stuck inside. And this is a super budget friendly recipe. You know, big bag of potatoes is only a couple bucks. You've got mostly the rest of the ingredients to make this. You've got some milk, you've got some cheese. Uh, so, so, so you're golden. So that's it, we're out of time. Um, uh, the sun is starting to come out a teeny bit. Eh, you know what, I thought I saw it. It's pretty cloudy here in Sheboygan. Oh, you know what? One of you guys asked me, and I, I promised her I'd tell her, um, what the heck you living in Sheboygan for? Well, I have lived the last 28 years in Green Bay, not originally from Wisconsin, but actually um, went, I was, uh, I, I was born in Michigan and used to spend my summers in Michigan because my family did that forever. But I actually was raised in, in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, grade school and high school. And I went away to college to Marquette University in Milwaukee. And then I was a news anchor for many, many years. And, uh, traveled around uh, and worked at different TV stations where my last TV station as a news anchor was in Green Bay. And then uh, about, mm, I would say 13, 12, 13 years ago, I uh, traded in my microphone, uh, my newscaster microphone for um, a, 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 a whisk and my blazer, my newscaster blazer for an apron. And um, it's been just um, a wild, amazing ride to, um, you know, uh, my passion and mission is to get people around the table again, get people cooking again, um, and trying to make it easy. It doesn't have to be super complicated. So that's what I'm all about is sharing tips and secrets and, and tricks and, and that kind of good stuff. But why I moved to Sheboygan is a lot of life changes. You know, I've gone through a lot of um, life changes, especially the last couple of years. Um, kids are out of the house, um, and one's in college, one's out of college. And uh, because I grew up on Lake Michigan, I grew up sailing on Lake Michigan and swimming in Lake Michigan on the other side of the lake in a little town called Petoskey, Michigan. I've always dreamed to get back to being on Lake Michigan. It's where my heart is. And uh, that's what brought me to uh, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Um, moved here in summer, this summer, and I uh, absolutely love it so much. I commute to Green Bay. Uh, it's not bad at all, uh, 45, 50 minutes. Um, and then I do TV spots a lot of times in Milwaukee, so I'm halfway in between. In fact, I'm gonna be on WATI Fox 6 Wake Up tomorrow morning via Skype, not in person because the TV studios are not having you know, in-studio guests. So you can catch me live doing another recipe when we're stuck at home if you're in the Milwaukee market tomorrow morning on Fox 6 Wake Up at around uh, 8.45, and then I'm gonna be on Good Day Wisconsin in Green Bay, again, via Skype, here from my kitchen, um, uh, again, Friday morning at around 8.45. So, yeah, so that's what I've been up to. That's why I moved to Sheboygan. I hope to show you around my pad a little bit uh, more uh, another time. It was perfectly neat and clean um, Easter weekend, and now, not so much. That's what happens when you're doing so much living in your house. So I promise to declutter and, and give you a little tour one of these days. We have a great view of Lake Michigan, and it's so wonderful to wake up in the morning and look out at that. 
um, every day. And Arlo likes it too, because he gets to go on lots of wonderful walks near Lake Michigan. So anyway, uh, boy, I did a lot of chatting today. I apologize. Uh, if, if you've got stuff to do, I'm going to uh, sign off now, say goodbye. I will stick around for the next half hour or so. If you want to chat, say hi, let me know what you're up to. What are you making for dinner tonight? Have you found anything good to watch on Netflix or Hulu? What made you smile today? I love hearing from you. You are my community these days. I don't have a lot of people to talk to. So um, thank you for indulging me um, and, and listening to me again today and, and my story and my recipe. All right, I will see you back here same time around 3.30 tomorrow in my kitchen. Until then, please have a wonderful day.